This episode was a boatload. This episode was some fire, guys. My god, that beginning, that opening, I was not expecting Urashiki to appear in this week's episode. I don't even know if he appeared in the preview of last week's episode because I don't really like to watch the previews all the time. But did I just witness Toneri Otsutsuki get fathered and frozen in time for 10,000 years? Man, guys, and honestly, it gets me so hyped because this actual episode, and this episode was done way better than the movie, this episode actually confirms, yes, confirms something about the Otsutsuki clan that we did not get in the movie. We had speculation, we had different discussions that this could be a possibility, but it was actually confirmed in the episode. These guys were dispatched by other Otsutsuki clan members from this main family that abandoned Toneri and the Moon Branch, and that means that there's more powerful Otsutsuki clan members out there. I knew it, guys. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And that gets me super hyped because the opening scene, Urashiki freezes this dude in time. Toneri charges at him, thinking Urashiki is like his long lost father or something, like running up to him, like, Dad, I found you. Mom never told me about you. But actually, I'm kind of salty because you weren't really in my life like that. And Urashiki just like literally pulls out like his string technique. He basically like catches him on his own clothing. And I'm guessing this has something to do with why they were dispatched. Like Urashiki has specific abilities to like control other Otsutsuki clan members, which is why that string like was basically caught up on that like um what is it called? The symbol, the Otsutsuki clan symbol. So I'm guessing it has something to do with that. But the entire scene just looks so pathetic. If you thought Toneri was a pathetic villain in order to the last, you are going to think he's pathetic in Bordo anime because dude just got frozen in time for 10,000 freaking years. <laughs> Apparently he's not authorized to kill any Otsutsuki clan members but it's like who really thinking about Toneri like that like dude is frozen in time and granted I'm guessing he could technically survive because Kage was what sealed inside of the moon for how long for a very long time so I'm guessing Toneri could really be alive here because you know the Otsutsuki clan members are like extraordinary humans that like are just more special and they could like survive being frozen in time for 10,000 years but dang like who's gonna save Toneri like that because He's just, like, not somebody the Otsutsuki clan really probably cares about. He's just, like, trash to them. He's, like, embarrassing to them. They don't- they just want to forget about his existence, right? They want to leave him on the moon. And who on earth is really thinking about Doneti like that? Ain't nobody thinking about Doneti like that. Um, this is just absolutely pathetic on Doneti's part. It would have been pretty convenient if he had the Tensei gone, but he actually lost it after losing to Naruto. I mean, he could have at least entered the- the chakra mode and gotten away and, like, warned everybody on Earth. And I think that's what the confrontation is about, is just, like, sympathies, you know, then he actually, he, he changed his mind, like, he's living on the moon to, like, repent in a way, he's just not, he, he's not gonna, like, just join the Otsutsuki clan main branch, especially being a part of the side branch, which is why I feel like they even threw him in here, just, like, as the petty side branch scraps that they're trying to get us to feel really bad about, but it's like... I, I can never feel bad about Toneri, I I'm sorry. Apparently, he's responsible for Boruto's Jogon, and I'm actually gonna do a separate discussion about that. Now, I've gotta say, I enjoyed this episode just as much as the movie, and yes, it's a little bit different with the movie because the Naruto manga ended, and the movie was like the next generation, and this was the first time that I seen all these characters as adults, so it is a little bit different. It's not as impactful to me seeing this once again. However, honestly, so far, if someone's never seen the movie at this point, I just tell them to watch the anime because this actual episode was executed very well. The art in the animation was there, looked a lot better than a lot of the other Boruto episodes. There was even an OST that they dropped in the middle of the episode that I was really vibing with. Like, they actually did a really good job and they exaggerated some of the emotions and made things a little bit more dramatic and I really actually like that. For instance, Sasuke's entrance. I'm like, still to this very day, a little bit shocked that he really doesn't know Boruto at all. Like, I understand he's on this journey of atonement, but you could at least meet your best friend's kid once. I mean, Boruto's like, he feels like a man. He's not a man, but he's like, actually, like, what, 12, 13 years old? You ain't seen the dude once. You don't really know him like that. He's probably seen him as a baby, of course, but he treats him with so much distance, and Boruto loves him still, and that just goes to show you that Boruto is still a kid, all right? If you can worship someone you don't even know, all right? Like, listen, there's cult culture in the world, especially today. It's mad heavy, and 
we're all kids in the heart in a way, right? So we all we all love ourselves some like role models we ain't never met before. But get off Sasuke's dick, all right? Especially when you could just throw yourself at like someone that just knocked on the on the door and like throw a punch or whatever. You ain't even see who knocked on the freaking door. You think it's your dad, but I mean. You, you can't just be throwing punches like that, all right? Like, th that could have been, like, some old lady, and now you just, like, knocked her out, and now she's, like, possibly dead because you're, like, actually, like, strong and you're a ninja. You ever think about stuff like that, Boruto? You are still a freaking kid. It still doesn't excuse Naruto using a shadow clone, man. Like, that was so embarrassing. Like, I was actually, like, literally smirking a little bit because I'm just, like, I actually feel the embarrassment that everyone is, like, actually witnessing right here because... You know, you saw the look on Naruto's face, right? Like, he started sweating or whatever. He starts walking over with that cake, and instantaneously, the clone disappears. The cake splatters all over the floor, and Boruto's there getting so emotional, and it was just like, it's messed up, all right? I'm not trying to get pleasure out of seeing these struggles, but it was just, like, kind of funny at the same time, because it's like, oh, Naruto, you are such a klutz. You are ridiculous, all right? You made a promise to Boruto. How you go go back on the promise? Like, especially since you screwed over, um, Boruto on his own birthday, and now you're gonna screw over his sister? And you guys already know my stance on that. Naruto needs to make more time for his family. On the other hand, there's things that Boruto simply won't understand, because he's still a kid. He thinks he's he's not a kid, but he, he's, still, he's still a kid. And I don't know why, but I really want Hinata at some point like if this actually continues for her to like stand up for herself like she ain't gotta like go on some sakura shit and start smacking naruto around that doesn't need to happen all right i know everybody loves the whole obedient wife thing that's some people's fantasy a beautiful obedient wife that's always by her man's side and i get it i get it this is like a more um traditional family environment so i am not going to put my messed up worldview and try and reflect it onto this family, right? Because everybody's got their role. But it's just like, you're not to gotta put on some pressure, all right? Like any day but today. Now we gotta talk about Katasuke because that's like the second biggest thing after Urashiki's entrance. Naruto straight up rejects him. Naruto has 100% changed, and I'm actually gonna make a separate discussion about that. But like, dude was never by the books. Naruto was never by the books. But right now, because he's Hokage, he has become by the books, and he feels like this shooting exam has to stay the same no matter what. And it's like, no, again, no. If the world changes, then the exams also gotta change. Sorry to break it to you. Even though I personally prefer the old system, it ain't the same world anymore. So, in a way, Ninja Tech should be sort of like looked into. Naruto just straight up rejects it. And it would take a lot of effort, but if everybody had the Ninja Tech, there would still be a hierarchy. It could still be really dope. Now, it's kind of scary to think about it like that, like everybody using ninja tech, like doesn't that kill the point of everybody having, you know, their own nature transformations? I get it, I get it. But there would still be a hierarchy. There would still be people who are just like, they, they have the ninja tech, but they've also got mad skills. So it doesn't matter if all these guys just have the ninja tech, right? There would still be some really awesome situations if they actually like went about it the right way, but they're kind of scared of that still. And that's why I feel like they're trying to develop a lot of these characters so that by the time um, the ninja tech becomes something that's like irresistible, like they got to eventually implement it more and more, we're going to care so much about these characters that have grown up, right? Like Boruto, Sarada, Mitsuki, who are all amazing in their own ways. Hitasuke is still a manipulative mf -er. He had some guts to pull out that wind style right in front of Naruto, though, right? And uh, he ends up getting basically caught up in something. We don't know what it is yet, but we'll know more and more as we see some really wacky things going on. Um, and yeah, that's most likely an Otsutsuki clan member that did what, you know, was done to him in this week's episode. All in all, this is probably my favorite Boruto episode thus far, just because of Urashiki's appearance. I am actually very excited about him, because the way they're pushing it is like, he's gonna be the most powerful of those three, right? He was missing for a reason, but now they're implementing him, and they're actually gonna connect him to a future arc that we have not got yet, and I think it's gonna have to do with Kata, yes. For the anime-only viewers, Kata's this Akatsuki-like organization that's eventually going to appear in Boruto, and let me tell you, there's things about them that are going to shock and surprise you, because I believe they are going to be competition to the Otsutsuki clan hierarchy. I'm not gonna say anything more than that, though. For the most part, everything was executed 
executed beautifully in this week's episode. Again, I really love that OST. I actually even like some of the interactions between Borto and Sara in this week's episode, and it's kind of rare that I like them, uh, simply because it feels like it's a lot of the same things being said over and over again, and it's also because this movie is being redone in the anime, so it kind of feels like that for me. And Mitsuki's still on his weirdness, man, like, Porto, you are my son, that's why I know about all of your insecurities and deepest, darkest secrets, like, you want to be acknowledged by your father. Mitsuki on some weird shit, alright? Like, if Porto was going through, um, you know, a sexuality phase and he was like, yo, Mitsuki, I've been digging your booty hole lately, like, as in, I've been, like, dreaming about it. Mitsuki would spread them cheeks wide open, boy. You best believe it. And yes, I have thought about that for anybody who's going to write in the comments. So before, why did you think of that? 